There we go. Welcome, Justin. Thank you. Um, so I'm here today. I'm Justin Sherrill. I work on the Catillo project, which heavily uses pulp in its content management uh, workflows. And so I just want to talk a little bit about the state of pulp and the Catillo integration, some of the things we've learned, some of the things we're seeing, um, and some of the, maybe the issues that we work through. So first, I kind of wanted to recap what our uh, releases have looked like over the past year and a half. I, I it, it was more releases than I actually remembered. I had to go back and dig through some release notes and repositories to find all this information. But so we've been integrating with Pulp 3 since Catella 315, which was in April of 2020. Um, and in Catella 4.0, which was a year later, we completely dropped Pulp 2, uh, which was, sorry, this should be Pulp 3.9, not Catella 3.9. Uh, and so we've had many, many releases, um, and we've definitely seen some changes over that time, which I'll talk about shortly. So some first, I want to start off with some things that are going well. The, I would definitely say the stability of pulp and the integrations points that we have has increased. We aren't seeing um, nearly as many breaking changes as we used to. I think the pulp 315 and 316 upgrades have been like almost hands off. Uh, we were seeing a lot of like class name changes in the client bindings, a lot of parameter uh, like renames, things like that. And we're definitely seeing those decrease as time goes on, which shows us that stability is increasing. Um, and this reduces the amount of time that we have to spend integrating with it, new releases and get some to our users faster. And we have a lot in the community to thank for that, uh, the, the issues that the users have found and reported both to Pulp directly and on our community forums, I think has helped. Uh, incredibly to, to get there. Um, so user perception. Currently, I think there are very few user uh, unresolved issues. We're, we've gotten at a good pace of a user reporting an issue and us getting uh, either Catello or Pulp attention onto it and getting it resolved. Sometimes it does take you know, till the next release for it to show up, but at least the user will have a patch or they'll have, maybe they'll have a, a Z stream released a few weeks later that includes it. And users were very willing to try Pulp 3. Um, so we, that, that helped encounter all of the, the initial issues and, and whatnot, um, which was, was good on our part, maybe more frustrating on the user's part, which I'll get to in a second as well. Uh, the old tasking system was very unreliable. The Also the sort of the fact that Pulp3 didn't retry downloads, it meant users really were not having success just consuming content. Uh, from what I've seen, from users on our forums. Catello 4.1Z, which is what uh, pulled in Pulp 3.14, got it right. There was a, a big improvement in quality, uh, largely around the tasking and the download retries. Uh, the number of issues that went away with, you know, I'm trying to sync Apple or I'm trying to sync CentOS and I, I, I just can't, uh, those seem to go away. And I saw a lot of remarks about how Pulp 314 on Cadillac 41 uh, was finally, at, you know, at a point where where they, it was sort of usable in production. Some of the current and, and previous challenges we've had, uh, the time to get a new Pulp version in a nightly is still kind of high. It's currently about two plus weeks after release, um, and I'm gonna go into that entire process uh, next. We have a long-term goal of, of having nightly builds of pulp into our uh, pipelines and in our testing so that we can encounter any issues early, but we're not quite there yet. 
and um, upgrading, you know, used to require more Catella changes, as I said, and, and a lot of times even pulp team support to, to understand, is this change even expected, right? I'm seeing this this thing that's different. Is, is that expected or is that a quirk or, you know, what was the underlying cause of this change to understand that? We don't have that much anymore. They've gone very smoothly. I'm gonna skip this slide and come back. Um, this is how we sort of consume pulp versions. So first, pulp core and any plugins that need updating are released. Sort of simultaneously, we have three efforts underway. Uh, one by our, our build team, which is delivering RPM packages for pulp core and, and plugins. So they sort of start uh, generating those packages. We've now paralyzed this so that we we spin up a sandbox and we can update the client bindings, which are uh, Ruby gems, and run our VCR tests, which are our integration tests with Pulp. Uh, they're not they're not sort of end to end integration tests necessarily from a Catella user perspective, but they are integration tests between Catella and Pulp. Uh, so we run those and we go and get a PR open for that. And then we can also open a bindings RPM packaging PR. Uh, and so these things can happen independently. And then sort of once the RPM packaging is finished, the other two items can be merged. And so for example, for 316, we've, we've basically, I think, got these two items complete. Uh, we're waiting, on, waiting to merge and we're just waiting on the RPM packaging for a pulp core itself to finish. Then once those are done, uh, we do some small final packaging updates to point installations at the new pulp version. And we run a pipeline, which does final integration tests from a user perspective, a Catella user perspective that does, creates uh, repositories, publishes content views, syncs to our smart proxies, uh, sort of does all the highlights of what a user might end up wanting to do. And then we have a new version of pulp and nightly. And so, as I said, the sort of the fastest this can go is about, I would say, two weeks, uh, maybe two weeks and a few days, if everything just runs super smoothly and everyone has plenty of time uh, to work on it. The as someone who works on the team that does these the these two items, the biggest thing that blocks us is the the build team building their packaging, um, just because that's something I don't have control over of their time and, and whatnot. Uh, and then hindsight, uh, you know, if, if we had a clear, crystal clear 2020 vision, what will we have done differently? And the one thing I could think of as we transition from pulp two to three would have been allowing that to occur over a long period of time. Um, we really, I mean, to be honest, there was really just a single release where we fully supported a migration from Pulp 2 to 3, and we had bugs that were that were uh, bug fixes at a certain state that it was actually feasible for most users. It would have been nice if we could have given users, you know, two or three releases where that was possible, um, or two or three releases where they could have picked Pulp 2 or Pulp 3, so that if they installed Catello, you know, like 4.0, they, their workflows were not working, they could have reverted back to Pulp 2. Uh, that would have been nice. Uh, however, I think given the resources we had, that would have been difficult to support. Having a single point of migration had its benefits um, in that we knew that as long as we got all the fixes back to that point, that we had a stable point to release versus having like multiple points where we're trying to patch to get uh, fixes in place for the migration to occur. Uh, the con was that it was more effort on the pulp side to sort of get those fixes all the way back to pulp 3.7. I know a lot of effort was put into that. Um, and I do, I do want to thank all the pulp team um, and the people that worked on the migration, especially for working through all those issues with us. And anytime uh, a user issue pops up and y'all take a look at that, that's super helpful as well. Um, and we, we much appreciate that, as do our users. Uh, and that's really all I had to um, talk about today. We've got a few more minutes if there are any 
um, questions or comments? Justin, is there anything we can improve like from our side to, I don't know, to make it easier for the your release workflows or, <laughs> um, I don't know, anything you can think of? Um, figure out the migration backporting would be the biggest thing I think that would help us. Um, backporting migrations to Z streams, which I know is maybe impossible, but that would be a huge win. Um, as far as the packaging and the time spent there, I can't really think of anything. I mean, I, I, y'all are very, you know, upfront and honest, and that's very helpful when planning things like the EOL of Django. Um, y'all probably stress that more than we typically care about it, if that makes sense in some cases, especially when we're talking about more downstream products. Um, but bringing that up early is very helpful because we're not always, we don't always have our eyes on that. Yeah, I, that's I, the the sooner issues like that that are going to require lots of packaging changes are brought up, the better. Um, let's see, Robin. So, Justin, related to that, out of the two weeks, and maybe I missed this, but out of that two weeks that it's taking you to do the integration, is that evenly spread out amongst the activities, or is there like some pieces that take longer than others? Um, if you take, it, well, it, it differs greatly among releases. Um, if you take a release like our upgrade to 316 or even three, well, let's say 316, because it was a, it's a minor packaging update, I would say. Uh, and, but it's also a, there, there are no Catella changes like whatsoever. The bottleneck there is RPM packaging, like hands down. And I think if there, if you know, if we had someone that only did that, that, or that was like half their job, and they could knock it out in a few days, it probably wouldn't be the case. Um, but since they're juggling other duties, that that's the biggest bottleneck, I would say. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I guess my other question would be like, how much of that is like actual time? Um, someone sitting in front of. Uh, yeah doing it versus what's automated and it's just actually taking a long time in the background um, but i think that's a question for the build team it sounds like so okay All right yeah the the stuff that we have to do ourselves on the Catella side it, you know if, if everything goes fine um and there's no changes needed in pulp you know it's maybe like an hour of actual time of our time excluding okay. like tests running in the background and that sort of thing gotcha okay that's helpful All right thanks uh, Dennis. Yeah, so one of the things we discussed probably a, a year ago at this point is trying to get uh, pulp changes tested with Catello on a nightly basis, basically. And we even opened some tickets in Redmine to uh, do some work on our part to make it possible. Um, we've made no progress over the last year toward that goal. And I would like us to actually focus on that effort uh, and get pulp changes tested, you know, with Catello every night. And I think that right there will reduce the amount of time that's necessary to add a new release of pulp. It will basically, I don't know. At the time when a decision is actually made to include that version of pulp, everything will be ready. Um. Yeah, and I think I think we could, without packet nightly packaging being in place, we could probably go ahead and do stuff to get nightly testing there. Um, the 
the the downside of that is that's not where our biggest like bottleneck is and where the biggest benefit i think is you know so if, it, if we had nightly rpms building uh and that broke it you know somebody could go in and make the single update to fix it and exactly. we could, we'd be off to the and, and i then, think that has to that's a big part of it yeah um is yeah. making sure that we are still able to build rpms or we identify that a version of a dependency has changed then we need to build a new rpm as soon as that change happened in pulp and, we, and you know we try to communicate that and as you mentioned we've been doing a pretty good job of that but having that be automated is just gonna make it that much better yep brian um, I was just imagining some nagware that tells people to build things. <laughs> um, anyways, no, uh, I had to build automatically. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I agree. Uh, I was wondering, Justin, if you could maybe talk a little bit retrospectively, and apologies if I didn't see it, um, and you already did, about the um, the allowed content checksums and pulps. I guess multiple. I mean, three or four releases where we did kind of gymnastics around um, FIP support for Catello's upstream. Um, I mean, overall, like, how did it go? Do you declare it done, kind of like it is in my mind? And if you could go back and tell your former self something, what would it be? Um, yeah, I think if you look at it from like a technical perspective or like from an in inside the development team, it's it seemed really messy and like hectic from the user perspective like they never noticed anything or cared right um that's great <laughs> it is it is great they, they didn't see how the sausage was made i guess um so from that perspective it was a success and we also don't i mean we don't have FIPS users or many FIPS users upstream. And I guess we don't have any. Um, we have, funny enough, a user did try to upgrade from four from Catello 4.0 to 4.2 directly yesterday, and they hit a problem uh, where they just had to run the check the the, the command to regenerate checksum. Uh, that's the only problem I've ever seen a user report and it was solved in two minutes. So and in a workflow we don't test, so that's okay. Um, but I mean, I, I mostly see it as I think the work is done. We still have work to enable FIPS in our nightly pipelines upstream. Um, and that's still something we want to do. And that's not turned on yet. That was my next question. Um, uh, do you have a sense of, of when that'll occur? Not necessarily like a date, but like, is it measured in weeks or months or half years it um it should be measured in weeks uh so i i've sort of just been testing it when i have time and monitoring the progress uh and the last time i tested it we were having some issues outside of fips and pulp uh but it looked like all of the pulp stuff worked right so i think it's just a matter of pushing it through the final stage and getting the work merged. Um, thank you. And is there maybe some way that we could follow along with that work? And you don't necessarily have to tell me right now, but. Yeah, um, I've got a, a card on our com board that I'm tracking, but if there's not an attached Intello issue, I will file one. Um, I think I'll post it on the IRC channel. I appreciate all your answers and, and also your presentation and all the collaboration. Great. Yeah, I think we're out of time. Thanks everybody. And again, thank you all for every bit of effort that you've helped um, with the integration and our user issues and our questions and all of that. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, Justin, I think it's important for folks to understand how much effort was on the Catello side as well and great, great collaboration from not like from you personally, of course, and from the rest of Catello folks. So thank you very much. That's
They're a great team to work with. Yeah.